everybody, Jeff Stone here on day 39 of the year 2015. We're looking at uh, Harry Robson here at magicreviewed.com. The Worker's Dream, uh, a great effect by Harry Robson. Uh, that's a little bit misleading. Uh, not the great part, but the effect part. This isn't really an effect, it's a utility device. So here's what you get. It's a wallet. What? A wallet on Wallet Week? This is the last wallet we're looking at for a while. Uh, and even if I get some new wallets in, I'm going to hold off for a while. I am burned out on looking at wallets. But <clears throat> as I typically have been doing, here's a size comparison. $10 Walmart wallet that Jeff uses every day in his regular civilian life. Uh, if you put it this way, it is about the same length as this is wide. It's almost two full wallets, basically. Um, so it's a it's a checkbook style wallet for it'll it'll work in your you know your back pocket as well but it's more of a inside the coat pocket or whatever. So what do you get? Well, it's multiple things like some of the wallets I've been reviewing. Um, they make the same claims, which is you can use this as your everyday wallet. Now that's not in the ad copy, so I'm not gonna judge that too much. But Harry Robson in the video did say that he uses this as his everyday wallet. And I just don't see how that's possible, frankly, uh, because there's only three credit card slots there. One, two, three. I hope you can see those very well. Um, and that's really it. Uh, there's a little spot here for putting uh, cash, I guess. But um, there's not really much uh, room in there. Uh, inside of here, I've got um, there's another wallet. It's, you know, so you can do a like a mullica kind of a thing. <coughs> so what you're getting is uh, it's a card to wallet. There's three different ways you can do card to wallet with it. It's a peak device and it is uh, an out to lunch style uh, business card holder if you know what out to lunch is. If you don't, sorry. Um, but uh, that's basically it. So now here's the thing. Uh, by the way, I'm making it sound like that's not a lot. It's actually very good. It's very good quality. The wallet's well made. It functions well. It does everything it says it does. Uh, so I, I'm not trying to downplay anything, but to be clear, keep this in mind. There's three ways to do signed card to wallet with this wallet. One way is the Molica way. Um, one way is to have it end up in this zipper compartment. And another way is to have it end up in the zipper compartment inside of a sealed envelope. So those are all three great ways. Of course, the Molica way is the no palm method where the card just ends up inside this inner envelope or inner wallet I should say reach in the slot pull the card out and it's a signed card and it's no palm version now you can do that version or you can do the uh, just standard card signed card to zipper compartment and it's super easy you don't the wallet right now is ready to take the card there's no special setup I have to do I just put the wallet in my pocket and then I palm the card and load it and there's no I don't have to set the wallet up in advance to do that so there's that and then there's this the um, signed or sorry sealed envelope version now um, the sealed envelope version what's nice about that is it's instant reset okay you now you, what you'll have to do is before I'm trying to open this bag here while I'm talking before you leave the house you'll have to set up however many times you want the, to do to do the trick well, you're only supplied with enough stuff to do 10, um, and I've already used one to test. So I've got nine envelopes left here. He tells you what kind of envelopes these are and where he gets them. They are created by a magic supplier. I don't know how much they cost to refill them or whatever, but you do have 10. And then you get this little device here. It's really thick, super good, hard plastic. You get 10 of those. You need that and the envelope and then you set up the envelopes in advance and so if you're going to go to a gig tonight and you're going to do signed card to sealed envelope in zippered compartment in your wallet if you're going to do that effect 10 times tonight you'd set up 10 of these which is you can only there's only you only get 10 of these anyway so you set up all 10 of them you just have them somewhere in your pocket or whatever and then you'd load one of them into the wallet and then the wallet's ready to go for the signed card effect and then the moment, you know, you take the envelope out of the zipper compartment, they tear it open, you put your wallet back, you literally just take a half a second to grab another one of these prepared envelopes and shove it in the wallet. 
put the wallet away and you're done. Harry Robson says he's done it right in front of spectators. And I believe him because it's such a simple thing. Doesn't it's it doesn't raise any kind of suspicion. But even if you were paranoid, you could just do it on your way to the next table. So the instant the reset on that is very, very quick. And I think that's pretty new to signed card to sealed envelope in the wallet. Um, there are other versions of that effect, but I don't think they're instant reset like this. This is instant reset. So um, the claim is, well, let's talk about the, the, let's continue talking about the card and wallet for just a minute. Um, remember that you get either the Molica, you get all three of these, but you can't exactly do all three at one table, right? Look, I have to sign a card. Look, now it's in this inner wallet here. Um, look, sign a card. Now it's in this zipper compartment. Look, sign another card. Now it's in this envelope in the zipper compartment. That's not exactly a good routine, I would think. You would agree with that. Um, and if the wallet is set up to do signed card in sealed envelope, you cannot do just signed card into zipper compartment, uh, if that makes sense. So if this is set up to do this in the sign in the sealed envelope, the effect will be in sealed envelope in the zipper compartment. But if you're doing that effect, you cannot use it at the moment to do just regular um, non-envelope signed card into that zipper compartment. So you, you have to pick between one or the other. <coughs> um, you can always do the Molica, regardless of what your setup is here uh, for signed card to wallet. But um, if you have it set up to go into the sealed envelope, there's something that they can see right here on the wallet. And so you can't exactly take the wallet out and, you know, flip it open and do the Mullica thing if you're loaded for signed card to sealed envelope in zipper compartment. So you kind of have to pick. If you're going to do the Mullica, you can't really have it set up for the envelope thing. But remember, setting it up for the envelope thing just takes one second. So if you're, you could do Mullica, Mullica, Mullica all night, and then maybe as an encore, you go back to a table, you just quickly shove the envelope in place in like one second and then do that effect or something like that. But just know, and none, none of this stuff I'm telling you is a bad thing. I'm just telling you what you're getting. Um, oh, and I'm not saying it's a good thing either. That's up to you to decide. But bottom line is this. If this wallet is loaded and ready to go for a signed card to sealed envelope in zippered compartments, you can't really do much else with it. Because then you're, when you pull the wallet out, they see the gaff, okay? But you can have the, you know, the envelopes ready to go just in your pocket. Do whatever you're going to do with the wallet. You know, you might have a whole routine in this wallet for 10, 15, 20 minutes. And then at the end, you can just quickly shove an envelope in there ready to go and then do signed card to seal the envelope inside zipper compartment uh, as your final uh, effect. So just know that if you do have the envelope ready to go, you cannot do anything else because they'll see it. I mean, you, you pull the wallet out and they'll see the gimmick there. So now, I mean, you could pull the wallet out and, and, and you know, have it down to where they can't see it and open the wallet up and do some stuff in here. You could probably do something like that. Just be aware of the limitations or of, of the awkwardness that you might have to hide something here. Okay. Uh, I'm holding down a cough here. I don't know if you guys can tell. So I'm going to take a little water here. I've had this weird tickle in my throat for the past couple, like almost a week now. I'm not sick. I just can't shake this little cough that wants to come out. <coughs> anyway, all right. So one other thing I'll talk about with the sign card to seal the envelope in zippered compartment. And that is, in the ad copy, he says, you can let the audience you can give them the wallet after you know you load the card. Give them the wallet, tell them to open it, tell them to unzip it, and tell them to reach into the compartment and get the envelope. That's true. Um, and they can do that. And they can also do that if it's just the signed card and not the envelope in there. Um, there is a little bit of a risk, though, that they will see the path of the card's journey, if you will, and you must. Um, 
but the odds are pretty heavily in your favor that you're pretty safe just with a little bit of verbal control by telling them when they zip it, tell them to reach down to the bottom of the wall and they'll find an envelope in there. And if they do that and it's just sitting on the table, I mean, if they hold the wallet up and they start looking in there, they're going to see something. Uh, but if, if the wallet's just sitting on the table and they reach in with their fingers and, and, and whatever, and you tell them to reach down here to the bottom and get it, they're fine. And, and I think the point he's trying to make in the ad copy and in the video when he talks about this is that oftentimes the signed card to sealed envelope to zipper compartment effect requires that you, the magician, take the envelope out, not because you're going to expose the path of how the card got there, but because the envelope needs a last minute little thing you got to do to it to make sure that it's all sealed off. In this particular handling, if you do it the way Harry Robson shows you, you don't have that. You don't have to do anything. The, the envelope is sealed the moment you, you, I mean, when you hand the wallet out, it's done, it's sealed, and you don't have to do anything funny to it afterwards. So I think that's really the point he's trying to making to, to trying to make. It's not so much about, yeah, they can unzip and they can reach in. It's more about, yeah, they can take the wallet out, the, the envelope out themselves because you don't have to touch it again. So either way, that it, it is a you know a good effect, you know, if you hand the wallet to the spectator, they unzip it, they reach in, they see the envelope, and they pull it out. That's, you know, it's hard to get uh, more clean than that. Just be aware that there is a slight possibility that, that the, a little bit of the gaff of the wallet might be exposed in that scenario. All right, moving on. Next, we have the out to lunch thing here. And if you're familiar with the out to lunch concept, I'm not going to expose what it is, but I'll tell you what it does. Um, I could have on here, I could write, let's say, uh, the seven of diamonds and then have you sign it right there, okay? And it'd be your signature on there, and then I would take the card out, and now it will say 10 of hearts or whatever, something like that. Uh, it could be something totally different. So uh, that's the, the out to lunch principle, which that isn't even technically the correct name. If you want a really good history of that, check out my book, 793.8. It's in there. Uh, but anyway, if you, if you want... Um, to be able to have something written on a card that the spectator has signed and then have that whatever is written there magically change. That's what the out to lunch principle allows you to do. Uh, the, these It comes with a stack of these cards. I don't know how many, uh, this many-ish. And these are not business cards. They're actually a little bit wider than a business card, than a typical business card. So here, and they're shorter. No, well, they're about the same height. No, they're shorter. So here is my business card. And let's just compare it to one. Okay, so business card. As you can see, my business card is taller and more narrow than this, this card. This, the reason for these cards, there's actually, uh, you know, because they have this little thing here that looks like a playing card, uh, you can draw a card in there. And also there's something written on the back. That makes for, um, and I don't know how proprietary what's written on the back is, so I'm not going to expose what it is. But it's something that, um, A, it adds a nice uh, bit of uh, bit of business, as they say, of laughter. But more than that, it actually has a real potential for getting you rebooked. So it's it's pretty clever. So, um, so, But also, this will hold a stack of your business cards just fine as well. I tested it out, and it holds, well, that's only one. You'll need a thicker amount in there. But it'll hold a good chunk of business cards and I'll show you that right now okay so here's a bunch just crammed in there okay uh, the other thing too is the out to lunch feature there is one little um, I don't know if it's a flaw of the concept but it's a it's a thing that can happen if you're familiar with this concept you'll know that the little special gimmick sometimes doesn't like to stay in place this has been modified or built in such a way that that problem is no more. It's very, very smart, very clever. And as far as I know, it's original with Harry Robson, so it's a new concept in Out to Lunch. Um, about time, because that principle is like 100-something years old. So there you go. Um, the Out to Lunch thing, um, I like this personally, not related to the review, but personally because I 
that have been looking to get a hold of Greg Wilson's stockholder. Those are hard to come by. He doesn't make them anymore, and uh, every now and then one pops up on eBay, but I've never found one um, where I won the bid or whatever. So uh, anyway, so this is nice because now it's got this built in. All right, what else does this thing do? Well, um, it's a peak device. So I can have a spectator write something down and then on a, by my business card, I can be out of the room when they do this, have them place the business card down inside this pocket, close the flap, close the wallet. They, they can see all around and yet I can still get the information that's written on it, okay? Uh, I'd be looking at it right now if there's anything written on it. Right now I'm looking right where it would be if I had written anything. But then immediately afterwards, I can still show the wallet. There's nothing funny going on there. Okay, so um, there's two methods to get that peak. You can only set your wallet up to do one or the other. Uh, it's easy to set it up either way, and it, there you can. It's not a permanent thing, you know. It's just that it's not like you can at this one table do use this method, and then the next table use another method. This is more about okay, before I go out tonight, which method am I going to be using all night long? So you can set it up to do it, and uh, there's a really, really clever way um, if you're going to be doing an outdoor gig during a sunny day. Those are very, the, that's the alternate method from what I'm using here. Um, and if, if you use that method during a sunny day, it's, it's even more indetectable, and it's even easier to get the information. So one thing you need to be aware of, however, is if you have your Mullica or your inner wallet inside of the this wallet you cannot get the peak it blocks the device from getting the peak so if you're going to use the Molica wallet you cannot use the peak now you can you know take the Molica wallet out right before you do the peak but that's a little fishy if you ask me uh, you can have the Molica wallet just sitting here inside not under the flap but that still is a little bit weird especially when you're ready to do the Molica trick um, it's better that that wallet is under, you know, inside the pouch. It makes the, the effect be much more impossible seeming. So just be aware that if you're going to be using the Mullica effect, you can't use the peak device. So what are you getting? You're getting a wallet that allows you to do peaks, that allows you to do out to lunch stuff, and one of three um, methods for signed card to impossible location. You can do any one of those three, and you can do, um, you know, two of them at at a table. You could do all three. I mean, you could, in theory, have this ready for the envelope version in your pocket. Get a card, have it signed, goes inside the envelope, and then you know, get another card, have it signed, and it just goes in the zippered compartment, but not in an envelope. And have another card get signed and ends up in the Molica. Well, you could do that. I don't know if that's a good effect or not, but you can do that. Um, just know that while it's loaded for the envelope version, you can really only do the envelope version and not the other ones. Uh, once it's no longer loaded for the envelope version, then you can do any of the other two uh, card to wallets. Uh, so that's basically it. What effects can you, I mean, sign card to wallet is sign card to wallet. There's no other effect there. Um, what effects can you do without to lunch? That, tons. I mean, there's books written on it. There's uh, there's tons of effects that you can do. Um, what effects can you do with the peak? Again, tons and tons and tons of things. Mind reading, design duplication, that kind of stuff. So that's what you're getting. Is it well made? Absolutely. There are those caveats I told you about how sometimes using one effect prevents you from using a different effect or different method, I should say. Um, probably the best feature of this uh, if you're doing the card to envelope to sign to sign card to envelope to the zipper compartment is the fact that you can instantly reset it and it gives you those 10 of those little um, plastic things that will last you forever. Um, that's to me is a, a, a big deal. Uh, so how about the DVD? The DVD is actually relatively well done. I mean it's not the best production quality. Um, you know some uh, minor audio and lighting issues but that's not the end of the world. But there were a couple things that I felt he skipped out on. And all, it seems like all of the Mullica wallets that I've reviewed or that had the Mullica feature in it lately, except for maybe the actual Mullica wallet, um, they don't really cover the handling of how to get the card in place. They just kind of assume that you know 
how to do that. And that's handling. It's not complex, but it's not simple either. It does take some finesse and some practice, and and you got to understand exactly the right handling to do that. And so that's a bit unfortunate that that was not covered on here. You just basically walk, you know, kind of brushed over it as if you knew how to do it. He, he sort of walked through it, but not really. Secondly, he mentions this idea that you can actually have a borrowed finger ring end up in the sealed envelope in the zipper compartment. And he showed you, you know, that how that might be possible, but he doesn't show you how to really do it. Um, what kind of handling you might use and how to, you know, work with the wallet and all this stuff. And so that's the kind of thing that, you know, if you're a pro, you could probably work it out yourself. But again, I felt it was a little bit of you know, lacking that they didn't cover all that information. So there were a couple places like that. Um, but there's plenty of great stuff on there. It's it's mostly covered in pretty good detail. And the wallet's well made. It is $167.99. It's the most expensive wallet of this entire week. But is it worth it? That's your call. I don't know if it's worth it uh, for you. That's, that's absolutely your call. Uh, but I will tell you this. It does everything it says it does. It's very well made. Um, it's it's going to last you a while, and uh, you know it's just it's going to take some practice to get used to how to handle everything. But uh, you know everything now that you possibly need to know to decide if you're going to buy it. So all you need to know at this point is the final rating: four stars. Stone status of Jim. It's time for you to like the video, or subscribe to my channel, and listen to the random iTunes song of the moment, which is good old fashioned Oak Ridge Boys right here. Leaving Louisiana in the broad daylight. If that's not a country song, I don't know what is. That was um, all the 80s country bands. You get the Gatlin Brothers and the you know, the Gatlin Boys and the Oak Ridge Boys and the um, Statler Brothers and all these brothers and boys. And I, it took me a while to keep them all straight in my head. Oak Ridge Boys, though. Um, the, this, is a, I, this happens to be the definitive collection, so it's kind of like they're big greatest hits kind of thing ton of great stuff on it anyway i'll put a link to that in the description below in the comments here on youtube and tune in tomorrow day 40 the one that everybody's been asking me to review that's right tomorrow we're looking at camouflage by jay sankey thanks for watching guys we'll see you manana peace out <laughs>